The member for Guelph. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's an honor to rise to contribute to the debate on Bill 66. Bill 66 is less about cutting red tape and more about removing the protections for the people and places we love in Ontario. And it really starts with children. It says a lot about the Ford government that they consider child care ratios that are there to keep our children safe to be red tape. I don't see how anyone who has read the 2014 Ombuds report, careless about child care, could vote in favor of Schedule 3 of Bill 66. The so-called red tape was put in place not because one child died, not because two, not because three, but because four children died in unlicensed care facilities. And I ask the members opposite to take the time to read careless about child care before you vote on Bill 66. Do government members really want to be on the record for reducing child safety when a future report will likely ask the question why any government would not only ignore the Ombuds report but actually overturn the child safety ratios put in place in response to that report? Madam Speaker, I want to be clear. I, I support home care. I grew up on a farm. Uh, one of my children went to a home care setting and was well cared for. Um, and as a matter of fact, um, I support parent choice in child care, but not at the expense of safety. So if home care providers are struggling financially, then we should look at tax incentives or subsidies to support these child care providers, not a weakening of the standards that protect our children. Next, Madam Speaker, I likewise don't understand how any government would consider the reducing toxic emissions to be red tape, especially at a time when we know that increased exposures to toxins is putting people's health at risk, putting more pressure on our health care system, and increasing the costs of delivering health care. The Toxic Reductions Act does not duplicate federal legislation. Unlike the federal legislation, it actually requires companies to have a toxic reduction plan. So I would argue we should actually be strengthening the act, not weakening the act. As a matter of fact, um, before the act was brought in place, Ontario had the second highest level of toxic emissions of any jurisdiction in North America. We were second only to Texas. Even places like Mississippi and Alabama were performing better than us. And, while, and, and so since the Toxic Reductions Act have been brought in, our performance has improved. As a matter of fact, according to the Ministry of the Environment, in their 2017 report, we've seen year-over-year -year toxic reductions in Ontario. And as a matter of fact, in that year, they were at their lowest level since 2012. But the government wants to get rid of it. They consider that red tape. So I ask them, because I know a lot of them represent rural ridings. There are over 800,000 people who work in the food and farming sector. Um, contributing over $40 billion to Ontario's GDP. Do we want to risk toxic reductions release onto that farmland that supports so many jobs in our province? And I also want to point out to them that in my riding of Guelph and in ridings across Ontario, one of the biggest challenges to urban revitalization and affordable housing is brownfield remediation. And so many people talk to me, want to be more fiscally responsible to reduce the toxins in the first place instead of spending millions and sometimes billions of dollars cleaning it up afterwards. So I don't see how anybody who would consider themselves fiscally responsible could vote for Schedule uh, 5 of Bill 66, which I want to say to the people of Ontario a quick thank you for the work you've done to remove Schedule 10 from Bill 66. It's because of your voice standing up to protect our greenbelt and to protect clean water that Bill, the Schedule 10 has been removed from Bill 66. And Madam Speaker, I know my time is limited, so I just want to take a brief moment to talk about Schedule 9, because Schedule 9 takes away pensions and benefits 
from frontline construction and trades workers. And they came to committee offering amendments to Bill 66 that would achieve the government's objective, which was to have more contract options for municipalities, while at the same time protecting the, the benefits and pensions of frontline, hardworking tradespeople. But unfortunately, they brought those amendments at 5.45, and the deadline for amendments was at 6 p.m. So we didn't even have time to listen to people, to respond to people, and put forward sensible amendments to Bill 66. So I want to conclude, Madam Speaker, by saying I'm a longtime small business owner. I want to see small businesses have less paperwork to fill out and lower regulatory costs, but Bill 66 doesn't achieve that. And I can guarantee you, I don't know of any business in this province that wants to invest in a place that doesn't stand up and protect our water and our farmland, our air, our soil, and our most vulnerable citizens. Because that's the kind of Ontario that people want to invest in, the kind of Ontario that protects the people and Thank places you. we love.